Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In War with Visions, let's talk about a topic that I think pretty much everyone is interested in, and that is uh, spending money in War with Visions. And then I don't usually do this, but I have uh, prepared notes here because there's a lot that I want to talk about, and then I want to be thorough as well. Uh, first off, I will warn that this is a very expensive game, uh, but so far it feels like it is worth the money, or that is the uh, general feeling among uh, Japanese players. Uh, of course, keeping Japanese players in mind, uh, they have kind of a, a twisted mindset when it comes to these mobile games. Uh, they spend on average twice as much as the uh, second most spendy country, which is Korea. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, but if spending money in a game on a weekly or monthly basis is not your thing, uh, but you're also an impatient person and you want instant gratification, then I would say stay away from this game. Uh, go play uh, Tactics Ogre or Final Fantasy Tactics instead. <laughs> uh, secondly, I'm just kind of guessing on the prices for Global uh, since uh, this video was made before the release of Global. I'm going off the uh, Japanese yen and then the, um, the exchange rate there. Uh, but uh, after the first month uh, since release, uh, there are a lot of drama queens going, oh my god, this game is pay to play only. Uh, but since then, they've all quit. And uh, the people who are still playing, uh, they realize that the game is perfectly playable as free-to-play or a dolphin. And then I'll be talking about four tiers of players, uh, free-to-play, dolphin, whale, and super whale. Uh, I will say, however, that the ground floor uh, for this game is higher uh, than in other games, meaning it's tougher to be free-to-play. Uh, and then the ceiling is also higher, uh, which means for super whales, there is more incentive to be spending uh, obscene amounts of money. Uh, so be warned, this can be an expensive game, and it's going to be very important to uh, kind of practice self-restraint and setting goals and setting uh, limits for yourself. Uh, but first, let's talk about uh, free-to-play, uh, that lifestyle and what to expect. Uh, your process is going to be very slow, uh, but you'll have access to pretty much everything in the game. Um, every couple weeks, there are free 10-shot pulls, and those should really be your only pulling. Uh, you want to save your lapis for buying uh, awakening materials or shards uh, for certain characters from the shop. Uh, there are some hatchers which are paid lapis only. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Okay, none here at the moment, but uh, this yellow button here, we can look here. Uh, we can see that it's going to take paid lapis. Um, I cannot pull this hatcher because I don't have enough paid lapis. I only have 23, uh, but this takes uh, 50. So as a free-to-play player, you will be uh, locked out of that. And then there are also uh, bundles, which are uh, paid lapis only. So... Uh, this guy here, for example, this also costs the, uh, the paid lapis. So yeah, here too, don't have enough, can't buy this. Uh, but all of the contents, you know, of the hatchers and the bundles, uh, they're all available elsewhere, so you can get them as uh, free-to-play players. Uh, it'll just take you some work and time to get them. And then there are a couple of money-only bundles. I'll show you those. Uh, one, you can get the, uh, the Metal Slayer Sword. This is the only way to get that. Um, I wouldn't worry about this too much, though, because uh, there will be future swords that are free. Uh, that have similar stats. And then the other one is the uh, the JP Point Up card. Um, there's not an equivalent for this, but of course there's lots of other ways to get JP Points for your guys, so uh, you don't have to worry about that either. And then next, let's talk about the Hatcher and uh, leveling units. I've actually felt in this game that there's less of a need to pull the Hatcher as compared to other games, uh, because the focus of this game is not pulling characters it's leveling characters. Uh, there are YouTubers out there that are doing, you know, 100 pulls every time a new banner comes out. Uh, but they are all idiots, and uh, they're just doing it for clicks, and you don't need to follow their example. Uh, with War of the Visions, you want to be very stoic about your pulls, and then choosing which units uh, to level. Uh, for free-to-play users, I really recommend doing the Reset Marathon, getting the UR unit that you want, and then focusing all of your materials on that one unit until you get it to a level um, that you're happy with, I would say level 79 or higher. 
and then moving on to the next UR unit. Uh, yeah, I'm serious, one UR unit at a time. And then that kind of goes for uh, MR and SR and R units as well. I would say the smartest way to go forward with leveling up your guys is to just pick one character of each rarity, finish them, and then move on to the next character. Um, I won't talk about which character, which UR character would be good for the uh, reset marathon. Uh, maybe I'll do a future video about that. Uh, but I have made a video about recommended characters that are uh, of lower rarity than you are, and I'll put a link to that in the notes. Uh, next, let's talk about something that is turning off a lot of people, and that is the uh, Royal Rank system. Uh, this is a thing that keeps track of your Royal Rank points, and the higher your points, the higher your rank uh, will go, and the more benefits you will get. Uh, there are two ways to get points. Uh, one is doing the daily quests, and the other is spending money. Uh, the most important benefit to get from Royal Rank is the 1.5 times battle speed multiplier, which is right, which is right here. Uh, you get to Royal Rank 1. Uh, you can achieve this as a free-to-play player if you do the daily quests for 30 days, I think. And then you can get the uh, 1.5 times speed multiplier. Uh, but as you raise your royal ranks, you get other stuff like uh, stamina refreshes per day, uh, more treasures from the Chocobo Expeditions, more JP from the barracks, uh, stuff like that. Nothing that you can't get otherwise, but you just get more of it and faster. Uh, the number one thing that uh, irks people is that in royal rank 8, uh, you can get the, uh, the battle speed multiplier uh, two times uh, here. That is crappy, but it's not so crappy. Uh, because another thing that you can do to speed up uh, your farming is to turn off attack animations, and that's an option available to everybody. And then there's also an auto farm feature uh, where you can set your phone and then forget about it for a few hours and it will just farm itself. And so like if you're sleeping at night uh, for a healthy length of time, um, 1.5 uh, versus 2 times is not going to matter, uh, because if you're sleeping long enough, uh, at either speed, you're going to run out of stamina um, if you fill up to a thousand anyway, so it won't matter in that case. And then as you raise uh, royal ranks, you also get access to these uh, bundles here at the bottom. Uh, but all of them are ripoffs, I would say, except for one, two, and three. Uh, at three, you get the, uh, the drops of uh, Monto, you want those, or the shards of Monto. At uh, two and one, you get uh, character uh, tickets. Uh, so you can pull those, get some characters, uh, maybe use them early in the game. Uh, but more important than the two times speed, I would say, is the number of stamina refreshes you get per day. And uh, we won't count uh, lapis refreshes, since nobody should be spending lapis to refill their stamina. Uh, but I'm Royal Rank 9, so I get 34 item refreshes a day. Uh, but someone at like Royal Rank 2 uh, will only get 22 item refreshes. Pay-to-play users will not only have more refresh chances, uh, but also get more stamina per refresh, uh, since they're going to have more access uh, to these big uh, stamina vials. This will be a factor for super grindy events like the limited time uh, Yashutara shard raid, and free-to-play players may have to rely a lot on co-op um, if their own stamina reserves run out. One thing about Lapis, uh, this goes for any player, I think you want to have at least 2,000 on hand all the time. Uh, because there are these uh, rotating uh, pickup unit shops, uh, like here, and then they will offer uh, 40 shards of a character uh, at a time for that price. And uh, 40 shards is pretty major. Uh, it can be the difference between raising your chosen unit's crystal level now or in a month, so you do want to be ready when it rolls around. Uh, these shops usually last a week, and it's actually pretty possible, it's pretty doable to gather 2,000 uh, Lapis in a week uh, before the shop disappears, even as a free-to-play player. Uh, but I'd rather not take the chance, so I think you want to keep 2,000 on hand as a free-to-play player. So yeah, I think that covers free-to-play. Uh, in conclusion, you will have to be very patient and very deliberate in choosing a very few number of units to work on to get them to at least level 79. Uh, pull the hatcher as little as possible, stay away from the limited time UR units, uh, maybe for the first three months, 
uh, you won't be able to play with the uh, big boys in co-op or PvP, but you'll get there eventually. Uh, next, let's talk about dolphins. And the gap between dolphins and free-to-play in this game is much bigger than in other games, uh, in terms of how the game experience is improved. Another way of saying this is that uh, you can get a lot of bang for not a lot of buck in War of the Visions. Uh, but first, let's look at the options for purchasing Lapis. Uh, if we hit the plus up here, uh, we come to this Lapis screen, and there are various quantities available for various prices. Um, except for these two cheapest options, I would say these are all ripoffs. Never buy these. Um, as one example, um, I can get this pack F uh, for about 50 bucks. It gives you um, 2450 paid Lapis, and then 400 bonus free Lapis. Uh, but if we get out of here and we go to the special shop, which is refreshed every week, we can see this. Uh, we can pay the same $50, get the same $24.50 Lapis, and uh, get three of these super rare uh, rainbow shards, and then a ticket to get a whole bunch of these uh, Awakening materials. Uh, that bonus is much, much better than the 400 free Lapis, which is only like two pulls in the hatcher, two single pulls, and then they can't be used for paid lapis hatchers or bundles anyways. So definitely you want to stick to this uh, weekly pack. Um, another example is uh, pack G, uh, but instead of getting this for the same price we can get one of these, and then we'll get the again the bonus rainbow shards, uh, but also some rainbow orbs which is nice and then more of these uh, Awakening materials. So yeah, I would say basically just ignore the screen altogether. <laughs> Except that once in a while, like at launch or around New Year's, in addition to these beige colored options, uh, there are also orange colored options which are not here unfortunately. Uh, but the bonus lapis that you get for those options match the paid lapis. So you're getting more lapis overall. Um, still, half of it is going to be free, uh, which again you can't use to get the uh, paid lapis hatchers or bundles, but still, it's a better deal than the usual stuff. And then um, all of those orange uh, options, and then also the stuff in the special shop, uh, those are limited to like a certain amount of times per week or per month. So if you were looking for a way to kind of cap your spending, you could uh, just spend in those, and that would help you out a little bit. <laughs> uh, next, let's look at the daily spend feature. That's this thing here. Um, if you get the 300 paid lapis in a day, uh, you will climb uh, like this ladder uh, one rung per day. Um, so uh, that could be like five, six dollars a day, and if you went for the whole five days, that would be about thirty dollars. Uh, you get maybe 1,500 paid lapis, you get a couple of the rainbow orbs. Uh, how does that sound to you? <laughs> or you could do just the two steps, you know, just aim for that single uh, rainbow orb. Uh, pay $12, get the 600 paid lapis. And that's what I usually do, it's just the two steps. Uh, but let's head back to the special shop and I'll show you my favorite bundle. Uh, this is available three times a week, and that is uh, this one here. So it's the same $10 price that you pay in the regular Lapis Shop, uh, but you get the bonus uh, 30 of the stamina refreshes, the big ones, and this is major. This will enable a lot of farming uh, for not a lot of money, and it's something that really kind of widens the gap between the free-to-play users and the dolphins. Uh, what I do is I often buy two of these a week and then um, I'll be set for stamina refreshes for the week at least. And then if I spread out my purchases, I'll have my two purchases, I'll get that rainbow orb. And so if I do this every week, which I don't, then that's about $80 a month. Uh, two other things I would say widen the gap between free-to-play players and dolphins. Uh, the first is the guaranteed unit step-up banner. Uh, there is not one at the moment, and there's only been one so far, I think, uh, but that was with uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. You could spend the 6,000 uh, paid lapis to do three steps and then get Ramza at the end guaranteed, a limited time UR unit. Um, there is a chance you might get Ramza anyway in step one or two, and if you did that, you could stop early, save yourself some lapis. Uh, but getting that first drop is really major, especially for a limited time unit. 
and then you could spend the rest of the event timeline uh, just getting the shards for the character. Uh, that guarantee for a top tier UR unit is another giant leg up on uh, free-to-play users. And then the last thing that really makes life easier for the uh, dolphins is the story quest pack. Uh, we can look at it here. Uh, these are unlocked as you complete parts of the story, and then you can buy these for paid lapis, uh, 1000 each, uh, or about $30. And if you do that, you get all of this stuff. This is so much. If you haven't played the game, you don't know how much this is, but this is crazy. And this is probably the best deal I've seen in any mobile game anywhere. Uh, this is very insane, and it's kind of the knockout punch in between the fight uh, between free-to-play players and dolphins. Um, so if you went for all three, uh, you would have the, uh, the boatload of stamina refreshes. Uh, you would have the, the guaranteed UR characters from the uh, Step Up Hatchers. And then uh, you would have the uh, boatloads of materials from these uh, story quest packs. So if you went you know, hard for a month getting all of this stuff, that would be about $250 a month. Uh, that does sound like a lot, uh, but again, this is an expensive game. But for that money, you are getting so far ahead of free-to-play users, it's not even funny. In a lot of other mobile games, uh, free-to-play players can be pretty competitive uh, with pay-to-play if they put in the, uh, the time and the effort, uh, but not in this game. But that amount of money that you put in will really, really separate you from the free-to-play users, get you closer to the whales. Uh, so, how many UR units should dolphins work on? Um, I would say two or three. Uh, you really want three strong units because Three units, that is a team in all of the uh, PvP modes, uh, guild and arena and match. Um, you could certainly get away with one of those characters being Mont, uh, the main character. Uh, let's see where he is, there he is. Um, so that would leave you only two URs to work on, and then you'd want to get them to level 79 or higher. Uh, but just like uh, free-to-play users, uh, pull the hatcher as little as possible, save your lapis for the shards of the uh, units that you have chosen. Uh, a side note on getting shards for your units. Uh, you need shards in order to raise their uh, crystal levels. The worst way to get more shards for a character is to pull in the hatcher. It's expensive and unreliable. It's a much better idea to refresh the shop while the unit is featured and then buy the shards directly. Um, so right now, uh, if we look here, we can see that uh, Jiza and then Erude are featured, as well as uh, Victora. Those three characters are going to show up more often in the daily rotating uh, shop. So, um, if I were trying to work on Jiza, um, I could buy her shards here. And then here I could uh, maybe spend a little bit of lapis, uh, refresh the shop. Oh, there she is again. So I can buy her again. Now I have uh, 10 more shards of her. And that's how you more efficiently work on raising the uh, crystal level uh, of your characters. Um, if you are looking to get your limited time UR unit to level 99, you're gonna be refreshing the shop a lot. And that's gonna end up costing a lot of lapis. After you get uh, beyond this uh, 50 lapis refresh, it costs 100 each time. Um, so that can build up. And then, of course, you're paying Lapis for every uh, pack of shards you're getting anyway. But it's going to be much cheaper anyway uh, than just pulling in the hatcher, hoping for drops of that character. So this is the way to do it. And then, just for reference, I can show you... Um, well, I can tell you about my experience with Lucia. I pulled her the first day she was available. And then from there, um, I was very aggressive about buying her shards whenever they appeared in the shop. But I didn't do any refreshes uh, past uh, the one, two, three, past the third refresh. So there were like no forced refreshes for 100 uh, lapis. And I got Lucia almost to four crystals. Um, so if you take it kind of easy, you don't go too hard, it is possible to get a character up to level 89 uh, within like the first week or two weeks um, as a whale. Uh, to get it to five crystals within that first week or two period, uh, then you're kind of heading into uh, super whale territory. Uh, but next, let's talk about whales. 
And then while whales in other mobile games are like top of the heap, in War of the Visions they are not. Uh, whales, I would say here, spend under $1,000 a month, uh, but they still have to be careful. There's no random pulling in the hatcher, no random leveling of guys just because you have the materials lying around. Uh, for whales, I would recommend just working on maybe five to eight UR units. Five makes a full team, and that's good to have for high difficulty solo content. Uh, while with eight, you can work on one for every element. And that's doable, since no one shares uh, those element materials. I think you want to aim to raise as many of your guys to level 89 or higher, uh, but it will take a while. Um, and I think it's okay to pursue limited time UR units, and then get them to level 79, maybe 89, if you're very uh, aggressive about it. And then lastly, we can talk about Super Whales, a class of spender that does not even exist in some other mobile games. Uh, but there are incentives in this game to spend just ridiculous amounts of money. Um, I would say they spend over $1,000 a month, and they're really the only users that have level 99 limited time UR units. Um, and then the Super Whales are the only players I would recommend to work on Gilgamesh. Since uh, his or her shards are so costly and rare. Uh, but if you are a Super Whale, bless you! And thank you for keeping the game alive. Okay, but I think that's all I wanted to say about spending in this game. Um, as for me, I was a whale the first couple months, uh, but I pulled it back and now I'm a dolphin trying to keep it under $100 a month. Just getting the stamina refreshes and the story quest packs. Um, if there is a guaranteed step up of some UR character that I love, like Locke from Final Fantasy VI or something, I might empty my wallet to get him to level 99 within those uh, two weeks, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, sprinting in the beginning and then coasting now, that was all my plan. And then I plan on continuing to coast until all of my characters are obsolete, which I don't anticipate happening this year, maybe not even the, uh, the next year. Uh, but with like so many other mobile games, uh, there are diminishing returns uh, as you spend more and more. And it's important to know where your own goals and limits are um, so that you can limit your spending so it doesn't get out of control. Um, also, it's important to understand the fun and challenge of each tier of player spending level and to know which tier is right both for your personality and your budget. And if you can't find a tier that works for both your personality and your budget, uh, you might want to stay away from this game. <laughs> uh, but there is a unique fun, uh, but also frustration to being free to play while whales enjoy aspects of PvP and co-op that most other players do not, but they have to spend the money to get there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this video will help you decide how you want to approach this game, and uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. Alright, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.